This series of Caravan of Garbage is brought to you by Loot Crate, the monthly geek and subscriber box where you get a bunch of stuff. How much do you want? Probably six to eight. That's what's in it. Mason, I'm going to recommend a special one for you. Is it Loot Crate Amphetamines? Because that seems <laughs> what you're on right now. <laughs> Loot Crate, uh, you know they do a variety of them, but this uh, they have ones called Partner Crates where they partner with certain brands and properties or whatever, oh. and you get something very specific. Uh, there's, there's the Halo Legendary Crate where you can join the Spartan Fire Team Apollo with the Legendary Halo Crate. It's me, Master Chef. <laughs> <laughs> from from hello. Uh, so you get five to seven exclusive collectibles from the biggest moments in the Halo universe, the Halo averse, oh. as I call it. You just open it up and you just flooded with a weird weird, weird bug race. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So if you visit lootcratecom planet you can get three dollars off that or any other subscription. Just pick one, pick them all. You can start with one. Maybe you could then get a different one or just have one. It's up. Whatever. I don't know. Let's get back to it. Let's get on with it. Welcome to the Weekly Planet's Caravan of Garbage, the show where we discuss a comic or a book or a movie or something like that that might not be so great, but maybe it's really great, but it's not, generally. Today, <laughs> Ma- today Mason, yes, we're talking Justice League of America, 1997, CBS tally movie. Oh my goodness. Now, have you seen I've it? heard great things. Have you never seen it? No. Let me just say up top. I've, I've imagined it a lot. Yeah, well, look, maybe keep it that way because this is probably one of the worst things Great. Like normally I'm like, oh, there's some redeeming qualities, you know, in in whatever. But this is like so bad it makes you question why anybody kind of makes anything and what's the point. Does it seem entertainment? Do you, do you watch media? it? And you're like, did they do this for some complicated legal reason, like for copyright, or did they lose a dare? <laughs> yeah, it did seems they lose, that lose way. They had to. They were like, well, I could streak naked across this football field, <laughs> or I could make the Justice League 1997 TV pilot. It's incredibly ill-informed for so many reasons. Uh huh. And partly because they just get the characters wrong from the get-go. Mm. So if you don't mind, just to kick this off, kick this off, I'm going to give you a team member rundown. Love it. A bio. Here we go. Who's what? Where's where? And in, if one of them is played by a really inappropriate actor, please let me know. <laughs> Not a problem. Now let me just say straight up: there's no Superman, there's no Batman. Why would there be the best two best <laughs> characters? And sure. Other characters have their merits. Every everybody's character, somebody's favorite character. But you know what? Shut up. Let Let's... me give let me give you one that definitely doesn't have any merit in this show, at least. I'm mm. I'm a bit of a fan of this character, but it doesn't work in here at all. Guy Gardner's Green Lantern. Good. That's pick. the version they went with. <laughs> now he doesn't have red hair. He uh-huh. doesn't have a bowl cut. He Two just strikes. looks like regular. No, no, like a Hal Jordan ish. Okay. Green Lantern. The other thing is he's a software salesman. You know, that makes sense, sure. Does it? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> okay. But that was in 1997. That was like being a spy. That's true. Or can, uh, an internet man. An internet man, exactly. Yeah, a Johnny yeah. Mnemonic. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, like most of these... Jazz drives out the wazoo, <laughs> you know what right. I mean? He has, like, definitively one of the shittiest costumes I've ever seen. It's like this faux leather, sleeveless, like, flight jacket. Uh-huh. And it's just... And it's, like, horrible... A horrible green color, uh-huh. and it's just over like a black spandex, and he's got like white leather gauntlet gloves. It's just horrendous. How's that? How's that Green Lantern ring, though? You know what? The Green Lantern effects aren't the worst for television, uh-huh. but here's the thing: his uniform. I'm sorry if you work in television, by the way. <laughs> In 1997. Yeah. But the thing is, it just goes to show like how far we've come. Oh, I'm looking when at you... this right now, and it, it does not look good. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing: Green Lantern's costume. Where does it come from? His ring. It's a construct, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. From his mind and the ring uh-huh. manifests it. It's just a costume he can't... You see him stuffing it into a backpack at one point. <laughs> right. It's just, I, don't, I don't understand it at all. <laughs> so his character arc is his girlfriend hates him. Yep. Can't really argue with that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've got Ray Palmer as yeah. the Atom. Mm-hmm. Now he's a high school science teacher. Good just start. kind of okay. He's, he's, he's a nerd. He's just a standard nerd. Uh-huh. There's nothing really appealing about him. Everybody on this team does seem kind of like a nerd. <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> he also has one of the shittiest costumes I've ever seen. It's like a red leather gridiron outfit, just yep. like the top bit. He's got some high pants red leggings. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And again, it's just kind of over like a blue spand or a spandex. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? This, this is what it all sort seems to be. It's like a terrible leather costume <laughs> over a really ill-fitting spandex. Uh, we got fire. Mm-hmm. Who's a struggling actress? Uh, she she's got a storyline where she can't get a job as an actress. She dresses up as a banana for a it's commercial. Probably she's setting things on fire. That all could the time, be it potentially. Honestly. Sure, um, her costume is terrible, but it's not as terrible because uh-huh. it's pretty much just the spandex. There's no weird leather on it, so uh-huh. it, it it's not good. But like comparatively, <laughs> it's it's better. And her subplot is uh, David Crumholtz is following her around like a weird creep and hitting on her. At if, the actor David Crumholtz? <laughs> yes, correct. Huh. Yeah, no, uh, so, and he's like 15 years younger than her. Was this post 10 things I had about you or before? I think it was before. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think he's 20 wow. and she's like 30, 35. Uh-huh. Uh, we've got Ice. Yep. You know, Fire well, We and couldn't ice. have Fire without Ice. Correct. She's the newest member, that, member of the team. She works at like a science laboratory for weather. Ugh. Also nerds, one, yeah. nerds, nerds. <laughs> also one of the shittiest costumes I've ever seen. Also, she has Guy Gardner's bowl cut. So I guess they couldn't give her both <laughs> bowl cuts. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, how that goes. Yeah. You know what they say? They broke the bowl after they made your haircut. <laughs> uh, we've got Barry Allen as the Flash. Mm-hmm. Or Barry Allen's the Flash. Sure. Uh, job status, unemployed. He's... What? Yeah. <laughs> He's that's, the, that's the one guy whose job I know. He's a I, forensic scientist. I know, but he is also the definitively worst character in this on every level. Uh-huh. Like, he's just unpleasant. He's dumb. He's obnoxious. He's just a terrible bloke. And he's got a running joke about, I'm just an idiot who can't keep a job because I'm such an idiot. And that, that's, his, that's his kind of thing. <laughs> his, his M.O., Huh. If, 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 he's if, Mo. If you, he's Mo, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the last member who I'll get to in a bit, maybe I'll keep it secret till later, but let me tell you, it's a Justice League classic. Mm-hmm. Love the actor. I'm just, let's, let's get to it later. Okay, sure. <laughs> sure. Okay, so one of the weirdest things about this is they all live together in the same apartment, except for Ice, who's not a member of the team Not in yet. a, not in a, like a secret like a moon base. They have a underwater base, uh-huh. but they live in just like a suburban apartment. They're all like 30 to 35 and they just kind of mill about together. It's kind of like... Friends. It's kind of like friends. Uh-huh. But it's also shot documentary style. So we're following this story as it unfolds. And then it will cut to like Barry Allen being interviewed and he's like, I'm just a dude who loves football and bowling and hanging out and being cool or whatever. I had, I had no idea this was part of that. What? Yeah. yeah really? It's, yeah, it's, it's like The Office. It's like The Office. It's huh. it's like The Office. Wow. It's just as funny <laughs> in no way. Mm. Uh, so look, it's a bold kind of storytelling device. It does not work on any level. Great. It, it, it just falls flat every time. So the villain is the weather wizard. Sure. Who they've kind of turned into quite the formidable fo- formidable foe in The Flash. Yes. But he is, it's not that at all. Because I was going to say, like, The Flash could take this guy by himself. Yes. And he's supposed to be fighting against this whole team. Exactly. Of idiots. Yeah. Who all live together. <laughs> That's right. Mm. So every now and then, like, during the... Oh, I guess it's a movie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I guess technically it is. Was it intended to be like a a two hour pilot pilot for a a TV series? Exactly. This actually never aired in the US. Good. But uh, so every now and then, Weather Wizard will appear on this poorly composited TV screen that's kind of left of center in the middle of this building in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. They're in New Metro. Not even a real. It's not even a real fake DC city. (laughs) That's right, exactly. God. And he'll just be like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn the weather and everybody's going to bow. And He's always like, give me $20 million. So uh-huh. he'll send like a hurricane and then the Flash does a thing where he runs around and it goes away. And then he sends a hailstorm and fire like melts it. So he's not, re- they're just kind of like, what is this? Who is yeah. it? Like, it's not really a threat. Nobody in the city seems bothered by it. They seem like, they seem like the superhero equivalent of garbage men. <laughs> That's like, right. Oh, all right, God, it's okay. It's hailstones. Okay, use your fire. It's fine. I'm looking at the back of the DVD cover and it does say, never before seen CBS TV pilot, exclamation point. Yeah, <laughs> like sell that's it on a good that. thing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So the weatherman is clearly uh, Ice's boss who works at the Weather Science Institute. Uh-huh. Like very clearly. They try to be like, well, maybe it's this guy or whatever, but it's, it's clearly just the boss, uh-huh. right? What she does, she discovers his weather manipulating briefcase. Behind oh, yeah. the cabinet. That sound, she sounds like very convenient. It. Yeah. But she opens it and then spills water on it and then she gets ice powers that she can't control. But it's kind of oh. thing where she'll touch something and then like she'll leave and then it will freeze. 
Huh. If that makes sense. So it's a lot of her like, I don't, what do I do? I wish I could help, but I'm not good. It at sounds anything. a little bit like the singing frog yes. that only sings <laughs> when, he, when he's alone. Exactly. So she's walking home from work and a guy who's rollerblading on grass falls past her and goes into the lake and he's like... Oh, remember rollerblading and grass? <laughs> Two right. things from 1997. Oh, <laughs> he great. Goes, he goes into the lake. He's like, oh, I can't swim or whatever. So she steps in to help him and accidentally freezes the lake. And he's like, Whoop, what happened? I'm trapped in a lake, in a yeah. frozen lake, and I'm dead. <laughs> That's right. Great. So the Justice League see this and then... And they're like, finally, something <laughs> worthy of our talents, rescuing a rollerblader from a lake. <laughs> and what they do, they go to a house in the middle of the night and they kidnap Ice because they think she's the weather wizard. But what they do, they just put one of those surgical gas masks on her. Huh. Like the Flash doesn't, Flash doesn't like grab her and like whiz her to the secret whatever. <laughs> They have, like, I guess they have just a surgical mask they use for kidnapping. It's not even, like, a rag. A kidnapping mask. A kidnapping sure, yeah. Uh-huh. Mask. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, but they have to let her go because... That's illegal. That's illegal. <laughs> that's illegal, obviously. So, she's like, was it a dream? What was it? I don't even know. So, then she goes to the top of her building at work and she sees her boss. And he's got this... He's got, one of, he's got a giant 90s industrial-grade video camera attached uh-huh. to a belt pointing yeah. to him when he's <laughs> making demands as the weather wizard. That sounds like a recipe for falling off a building, <laughs> if you ask right. me. But he doesn't have a mask on because he, he appears with, like, sunglasses and, like, a, like a balaclava and a bandana. Uh-huh. But what this TV does, or he must have a program that not only manipulates his voice but puts in a real-time bandana... Over his head? Huh. It's, it's, very, it's very bizarre. You like, know what he could have done? He could have sold that for $20 million. <laughs> absolutely, he could have. It's like when you see a bad guy in a movie, like in the late 90s, and they're using what something that looks clearly like an iPad before yeah, it's time. You're exactly. like, just sell that. Exactly. Make a mint. But look, I know I shouldn't be too hard on these special effects because... Nah, do it. It's TV, and it's from the 90s. All right. But it's... Uh, okay, some of the worst stuff is like the compositing shots of when Ray Palmer shrinks uh-huh. it's clearly like a man on a green screen and they just kind of slap him on top of wherever he needs to be there's a bit where he runs into a drain and saves a cat there's a <laughs> bit where he's inside a tv he's trying to fix their home tv because they want to watch touched by an angel that that's a right. line in is this. that a good cross promotion i checked it that's a cbs show nice <laughs> so, right. yeah, yeah that took me back i'm like wow touched by an angel <laughs> i haven't done that in a while uh but the, but the worst one is easily when they infiltrate the science museum sure. party for the science mm. expo or whatever he he's looking for information and he comes to an open door but it's got lasers across it so he shrinks so he can i mean it should they could have just locked the door but they just <laughs> put lasers. they're not yeah. like lasers that burn you it's just an alarm oh yeah mm-hmm. so he shrinks and then he there's like 30 seconds where he just limbos under the bottom one <laughs> just back and forth it maybe it's not 30 seconds but it feels really long uh-huh. and that's the thing like every joke in this falls flat there Great. is not not a half decent one among the many many jokes that that unfold can you remember i said there was a re- recurring joke for the flash he can't get a job oh yeah sure yeah like he goes he gets a job as a mailman and he gets fired because he's he delivers all the mail and they're like well we can't have that so they huh. fire him. That's satire. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. Because in the 90s, people were really mad at the postal <laughs> they, service. They certainly were. Postal service is quite slow when you think about it. And at this kind of science convention that they've infiltrated, he hits the waiter up for a job. He's uh-huh. like, hey, where can I, can I maybe... Is he in his give- costume at the time? No, he's okay. just in like a sport jacket and a t-shirt or whatever uh-huh. you're wearing yeah. in the 90s. And the waiter's like, "You aren't you a scientist? Because this is a science convention. Do you work here? Right. And he's like, oh, no, I'm a scientist from a different from a different uh, building. I'm a, and he says, I'm an archaeopologist. That's, that's the line he comes up what? with. <laughs> I'm against this universe. Barry Allen's a man of science. I know. How dare they? I know. Why, why, why do that twist? I don't understand. It makes me angry, Mason. Mm-hmm, and it yeah. makes you angry in turn. Yeah. So, meanwhile, David Krumholtz is, uh, is just following fire around. Mm-hmm. And he, like, he can't take the hint. She's like, seriously, can you just fuck off? And he's <laughs> like, no. Nah. Here's some earrings I bought from Paris once for a very special lady, and that's you, or whatever. And she's like, okay, thanks, or whatever. So she puts them on. That comes back into play later. What they do, they take, then they grab ice, and they're like, listen, you seem like a, like a cool 90s chick. Mm-hmm. We're going to take you to our underwater base, and we're going to introduce you to our leader. Willingly this time. Willingly this time. 
<laughs> We're gonna uh, introduce introduce you to our leader, Martian Manhunter. Oh, twist! Played by the great David Ogden Steers, who I'm a big fan of. You know, mm. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I bloody love Mash, Mash. and I mm. bloody love David Ogden Steers. Mm. It's not the worst costume in the show. All right, sure. His head looks... It's like a wide version of the mask. Yeah, the okay, head. uh-huh. But here's the thing, like... Does he look great in his classic underwater lair? <laughs> now that Martian Manhunter is always... His trademark underwater lair. That's right. The perfect character for an underwater lair, I think. <laughs> so, but critics said that they felt that Steer's weight affected his portrayal of the character. Mm-hmm. And at first I'm like, oh, he doesn't know he looks all right. But then he turns side on and you're like, oh, dear. <laughs> look, man, I'm a big... David Ogden Steers fan, you know that. It hurts, it hurts me to say that. I'm a bloody Ogo, <laughs> mate, from way back. But, yeah. But it's not the worst costume. Also, he doesn't do anything. Sure. Well, I'll get to that. In okay, a great. So Ice, they're trying to teach Ice how to use her power. And she's like, I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. I'm terrible at this. I wish I was a hero, but I can't. Or whatever. Krumholtz is still bloody at it. I think it. she's going to learn a valuable lesson Maybe by she the will, end. Mason. Yep. So Krumholtz then sees the Justice League on TV and he recognises his earrings on fire. Oh, so he yeah. goes to her and he's like, you're clearly fire because she doesn't wear a mask and also you look exactly like her. <laughs> yep, uh-huh. Not to mention you sound the same. And she's like, well, I tell you what, that's definitely not the case. And he's like, well, listen, the only way that you could prove that you're not is if fire walks through the door. And then Martian Manhunter shapeshifts. This is the one thing he does. Oh, yes. And he walks in and he's like, did somebody say fire? And she's like, <laughs> oh, that's right, because I'm friends with fire and I lent her the earrings that you gave me. And he's like, well, that's... Good enough for me, I guess. Yeah. So really convoluted. Mm-hmm. Imagine if the characters on Friends had shape-shifting powers. <laughs> I know, right? How amazing would that have been? What if Ross could be Joey? Yeah. We were on a break, but then Joey transformed <laughs> into Gunther. <laughs> I don't know. So Weather Wizard mounts a final attack on the city. Oh. He starts by firing a laser into the Justice League's... That's not weather-based. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Also, you never see where it comes from. It just kind of comes from the sky. Probably a cloud. Probably a cloud. cloud. Okay, I'll give him this one because it came from a cloud. (laughs) So, as like the building's heating up, Uh and so Green Lantern's like, we've got to get out of here. So Mm -hmm. what he does, he he physically grabs a, what's it called? A bloody crowbar, Uh and he goes to crowbar the door. Like he doesn't make one Uh or use like a big kind of, I don't know, like a jack or something to open the door. Nothing. Wow. He grabs an actual crowbar and tries to pry the door open. They get out because they <laughs> did a thing that the TV guy taught them earlier about using gum and electricity or something. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's not important. So, the Green so La- far, they haven't used a lot of their <laughs> superhuman superpowers. Well, you're about to see some, oh. Mason. Uh, Green Lantern. And look, if you're listening to the audio version of this, I recommend you go and watch the, the video one on my YouTube channel uh-huh. because Green Lantern flies to meet the Weather Wizard. And what he does, he's just got like a green stick and it's got like rotor blades on the top. Ah. So he looks like Mary Poppins. He's not he doesn't cover himself in like a green bubble uh-huh. or even just make himself like a green fly. jet plane. Nah. Huh. Weird Mary Poppins umbrella. Uh-huh. So he flies down, he's like, Weather Wizard, I got you. Bloody give it up. Give me the briefcase. And the Weather Wizard's like, what about this? And he throws the <laughs> and he throws the briefcase just kind of down a, a cliff. Oh, and, yeah. and Green Lantern's so like... So Green Lantern could make a big yeah. green hand and grab it, maybe? And it's not like into a waterfall or into a volcano. It's just kind of oh. down a bit. Or into a big yellow box yeah, that's that right. Green Lantern couldn't affect. Exactly. So Green Lantern's like, he calls the team and he's like, nah, we're fucked. <laughs> like, I can't, <laughs> I can't do anything. Look, all I had was this Mary Poppins thing. That's, there's, that's right, because there's this giant tidal wave coming towards the city. Oh. Flash is trying to gather up all the kids. He's mm-hmm. trying to be useful and, and whatever, but... They can't, they can't stop the Do not trust the wave. Flash with, <laughs> with human life. No. So what Ice does, she's like, this is my moment, I can do this. So she goes out and she, that's my girl voice, by the way. <laughs> she freezes the wave. It's real voice. <laughs> real voice. She freezes the wave. Uh-huh. And then they're like, you bloody, you did it, you're a member of the team. Uh, this is, that's it, basically. <laughs> Here's the costume. It's- that is never going to unfreeze, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> We'll just leave it. It's fine. They So this is how it ends up. She gets a horrible costume. Nice. Green Lantern catches up with his old girlfriend and she's like, I still hate you or whatever because uh-huh. you're a bad bloke. Yep. Flash gets a job at the youth center because he guess he's pretty good at with kids. Because he didn't kill all those kids. he didn't kill yeah. all those kids or save Yet. them. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Fire doesn't end up dating Crumholtz. Oh. But then she's like, well, I'm off to meet Crumholtz because he wants me to introduce... He wants me to meet his 16 year old year old cheerleader girlfriend i'm like huh. why is that happening now i see why this got cancelled 
the Adam uh, continues being a lonely nerd. Yeah, yeah, oh, great. he's pining after ice the whole time. Oh, yeah, Doesn't great. really unfold. And Martian Manhunter appears in a hologram and does nothing. He gets stuck in a door frame. Also, there's a bit where... Because he's real fat. <laughs> also, there's a bit where he's morphed into the boss, the evil weather wizard boss. Yep. But it never plays out. You don't, you don't know how long he was the boss for, <laughs> like which scenes is the yep. bo- is the w- actual weather wizard and which scenes is Martian, Manhunt- Martian Manhunter. Also, they didn't know that he was the weather wizard. So why was he doing it? Yeah, it's never explained. Why would well it would have been explained in every in every remaining episode. The rest of the episodes would have just been a long explanation of the first one. So is the, the I've I've looked it up. Is the weather wizard? Is it Miguel Ferrer? Is it that guy? I believe so. Is yeah, it, it's Bob Morton from RoboCop. Yeah, correct. That's exactly yeah. who it is. Ah, oh, that guy's great. He is. He is. And yeah. look, he's not terrible. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, Mason. But what are you working with? You know, nobody nobody at the time knew how to work with superhero stuff and. Great green screen and... No, certainly not. Green Mary Poppins <laughs> umbrellas, you know what I mean? They did the best they could with what they had. The thing is, I know it's TV and I know they never greenlit it, but it's just Quite bad. Green Lantern did. <laughs> it's bad and boring and stupid. <laughs> like, no one throws a punch. Yeah, It nice. sets up a whole lot of future events that I'm just glad never unfolded. Uh-huh. And you know what? Green Lantern's suit looks kind of blue. Now that I think about it, it's kind of a weird aqua shade. It should be green. In summary. Yes. I know we're, we're normally like, you know, we did steel or whatever. And we're like, yeah, maybe some of these are like, give it a look. You don't, you don't, you don't need, you don't need this in your life. Maybe watch the trailer. Yeah. Or maybe watch the video. Maybe watch the video. That you literally may be watching now. It's well over an hour as well. It's maybe an hour and 20. That's like, there's some length to it, Mason. Ooh. And you feel every second of it. This is the worst incarnation of the Justice League ever Until made. Until Justice League 2017. <laughs> there is no way anything will be made that is as bad as this ever again. Wow. It's not possible. Huh. It's kind of great, though. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> not even, like, even fan films are better now. I oh, feel. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I've been Mr. Sunday Movies. I've been... Nick Mason, it's my real real name. You can find him at Twitter also. I'm at, at Wikipedia Brown on, on the Twitters. And I'm at what I said on Twitter. Yeah, nice. Thanks for listening, guys. See you guys. Grab that jam. We'll see you uh, again. I was going to say next week, but whenever we end up releasing these. What, however we? this is at working. At the next one. <laughs> see, see you on the podcast. I'll see you in the street. It'll be fine. Say hi. Okay, bye.